There are three things I want you to think about that you may not have considered before. One, the suck. Two, the commitment. Three, lifestyle changes. I know what you're thinking. That's such a weird list. The suck, commitment issues, and lifestyle changes. I haven't heard of these before, at least in context of through hiking. Well, let me tell you why. All right, so the suck. You know, you know when you're laying there at night in your warm bed at home, if you're cold, what do you do? You get another blanket, you go turn up the heat. Whenever you're out there, you know this as well as I do, for how many ever days it is, whether it's 80 days, 120 days, uh, you can't just get up and turn on the heat or get another blanket. This is what you're like right here. And that's where we gotta talk about the suck. Because if you can't handle the suck, you can't handle the through hike. A through hike will take you down to your most vulnerable state. I have limited experience, but from watching a lot of videos and really boiling down the, the things that kick a lot of people off, being uncomfortable, being vulnerable, and not being able to escape unless you completely remove yourself, like get off the trail, that's really difficult because you're choosing between adversity and comfort. And what are you normally gonna choose? We're getting ahead of ourselves because that's gonna come in the commitment territory. There's a lot of arbitrary things that kick people off the through hike, but I'm gonna tell you the ones that you deal with the most and on a daily basis that it won't necessarily kick you off, but it'll tilt you over the edge and maybe something else will cause you to get off. First thing, being cold. Depends on what trail that you are traveling on, but being cold is something that will inevitably happen, whether you're getting rained on, whether it's at night, whether you took too many clothes off and it's getting late and you're just getting cold. Being cold is an uncomfortable state and it's not something that most people are used to. In this day and age, you can always find comfort in putting on more clothes, turning up the heat, but that's something inevitable that is part of the suck that if you're not ready to embrace that, you might struggle. And that's why I'm heeding these warnings against you and maybe, you know, maybe you figure out some things for that. Uh, number two on the list of the suck is sleep. You're gonna have crappy nights of sleep. And maybe you already have crappy nights of sleep like on a normal day-to-day -day basis. This kind of amplifies it. You're not in your normal habitat. You're not in a bed. And you're really sleeping in a confined space with kind of, which kind of messes with some people. After you've had that bad night of sleep, how did your next day at work go? How did it affect your day-to-day -day life that day? You probably didn't have that good of a day. So imagine you're out there through hiking, hiking a outrageous amount of miles, and you had a bad sleep the night before. That's gonna affect your mental. That's not only gonna affect your mental, it's gonna affect your performance as well. And that is something that if you don't take care of and you're not ready for, you're gonna have a bad time and maybe, maybe you shouldn't go for it. It almost sounds redundant at this point, but being wet is gonna happen. And honestly, it's part of the suck. You're not gonna get a good sleep. It's gonna suck to try to eat lunch or dinner out in the rain, but it's going to happen. And that's why it's part of the suck. It's something that you cannot avoid unless there's just some magical drought for the amount of months that you're out there. But being wet is something that you have to deal with. And I know I'm giving you a lot of doom and gloom here at the beginning, but we're gonna talk about at the end the things you can do to combat these three things the best. Number two is the commitment. And this is the one that I dealt with the hardest. I thought that I could commit to something like this, but you know what? I couldn't. And that's why after, <laughs> I hate reiterating this, after three days, I quit. But I've learned so much along the way from that. And I'm not saying that I won't again, because I'm not committed to a through hike. This is talking about the commitment of a through hike though. A through hike, you guys know what that is. You didn't click on this video, without knowing what a through hike gives. You're, you're here because you're wondering if you're it, right? And I'm telling you that maybe you are. The commitment aspect. Not only are you taking time off of work, setting aside a large amount of money, you're setting aside a large amount of time as well. And in my mind, I fantasize that it's some grand adventure with no downsides. And yes, yes, it is a grand adventure, but what happens when your grand adventure that you're taking time away from family, your potential spouse, your kids, you're losing money, you're spending money, all of that starts that up and as soon as you get hit with that first big wall of adversity, as soon as you get hit with the second wall, the third, the fourth, where does your commitment lie at that point? And you're not going to know, but this is where I want you to be real with yourself. Where have you dealt with this commitment in the past? Not on the through hike before, because maybe you've never been on one before. And if you have, you're good, most likely. That means you've at least went through it before. But look back at things in your life, and I know this is getting deep for no reason, that you've dealt with or used commitment for. How did you handle that whenever adversity came? How did you deal with that situation? Did you make it out the other side after the third, fourth, fifth wall of adversity hit? Or did you not? Something to consider. Number three, and this is the biggest umbrella 
of the changes. Well, it's literally in the title, it's literally changes. But lifestyle changes. And this is a this is such this is such a big one. Before I get into the real meat of what lifestyle changes, I mean you guys know what the lifestyle changes, but here's the biggest thing that if you get anything from this category, get this. If you're not used to change, if you hate change, like you hate moving, you hate a lifestyle change, you hate a job change, all of that gives you stress and anxiety, this is going to be very difficult for you. Like more difficult than the average person because if you can't handle change, this is change on a massive level and it's over fantasized a little bit, I'm gonna be honest. Big lifestyle changes that you're gonna encounter, that these are things you probably already knew, but it's just, it's small things that add up that if you're not used to, it's gonna be difficult for you. Number one, you're gonna be in a lot of pain. And I know this is negative, we're getting to the positive, I promise. You're gonna be in a lot of pain from walking lack of sleep in this big change. Even if you're a person who's used to change, your body is not used to walking this amount of miles. And you can say, oh, I'm a runner, whatever, whatever. Walking is a totally different body movement than running. And people have it twisted about if you're in shape, if you're in good physical shape, you're gonna do great. No, you're using totally different muscles in your body and this lifestyle change will come with soreness on top of all the other things I'm gonna talk about. And you're going up and down hills, you're, you're climbing differently, you most likely have trekking poles, and you're carrying weights on your back. All things you don't do on a day-to-day -day basis, and you obviously don't even do at the gym. And then you have, you have the obvious ones. Sleeping outside, which comes with a lot of different uh, weather acclimations. Inside sleeping at home, you don't have to acclimate to anything, right? The only thing you acclimate to is you hear sometimes the water droplets on the window and it sounds really nice and you sleep really good that night. No, no, no. Water droplets on a tent is totally different. Imagine like the loudest thing you've ever heard. Like, so, you know, normally you sleep in, uh, inside, you, you literally put tape over the little lights in your room because you can't sleep with any light. Yeah, that's just, that's just out. That's out. The lifestyle changes is you're giving up, you're giving up comfort for the potential of so much. And that potential is there and we're, and we're getting there. I promise we're getting there. <laughs> All right, last thing, last thing in lifestyle change. And this is probably, I don't know if this one's obvious. Life outside. I know that's a big shocker, right? It's like, wait, well, yeah, I'm gonna be through hiking. Of course I'm gonna be outside. Life outside is different. In a normal day-to-day -day basis, you almost always, even if you have a job that is outside, you have that balance of like, you know, 12 hours or, or less outside, 12 hours inside. Whenever you're out there, except for every few days whenever you get off or if you're a regular hostel stayer, um, you you are outside. You and, and, I, and I can't explain how it affects you, but it's just different. You gotta poop outside. You gotta eat outside. You gotta sleep outside. You just kind of feel gross because you're not showering either. So these lifestyle changes kind of add up. And in, and in our minds, we, we kind of fantasize it. But I need you to get real with yourself. Because through hiking is not for everyone. And I don't want you to set out for one if you're not ready for it. But if you are ready for it, and you are that 20 to 25% of people that can make a full through hike, I want you to be assured by this that you can do it. Okay, so if you're not depressed, clicked off, and already canceled your trip by now, I do have the good news for you. Okay, let's break this down. Let's break this down really quick. So now you can actually get to the point where like, yeah, I'm feeling confident. Okay, I was feeling really negative, but now I feel confident. First one, the suck. Let's combat the suck. The three things we talked about, being cold, sleeping, and being wet. Luckily, all three of these have the same answer. Get good gear. Yes, I know what you're thinking. What if I don't have any money? Or what if I want to cut some corners and get some new stuff? Don't do it because to combat sleep, you need a good sleeping pad, you need a good sleeping bag, and you need a good tent. And I cannot stress you enough, don't bring your old tent that's 20 years old. The two person tent, they're like, oh, I'll just make it into one. Don't cut corners on this. Because if you want to, the reason I'm harping on this so hard is because if you want to succeed on the through hike, you need to give yourself the best chances, the best possibilities. Because the truth is, the truth is, is you might get taken off for reasons that you can't control. So you want to set yourself up for success. So get good gear. Sleeping bag, sleeping pad, tent. For cold, get a jacket. And I'm not talking about just like a big puffy jacket that you can't carry around because it's too heavy. Get one of the ones that fold in on itself that you can store about this big. They do make those. They make the same for rain jackets as well. To combat the rain, make sure you stake your tent right. Watch some videos on, on depending on if it's really hard rain or if it's a rain where it's just kind of drizzling down. How you should stake your tent so your inner wall doesn't get too much condensation and you get a puddle in your tent. 
get a good rain jacket. And on top of, get, don't only get a rain jacket, get a poncho that goes over you and your pack. You wanna stay as dry as possible to give yourself that comfort. With commitment, I kind of already answered it in itself. You need to be real with yourself, but the biggest favor that you can do for yourself is to get a support group or a person. And every support group and person is different because you need to know who you are. So you might need somebody who's gonna be really hard on you, who's gonna push you no matter how weak you're feeling or how much adversity you're feeling, you might need that person to keep pushing you over the edge, or you might need that person that you call that you just vent to for five minutes, tell them all of your troubles, and they say, you know, you're good, keep going. It depends on who you are. So know who you are first before you, and then make sure you explain to them what kind of support group or what kind of support person it is that you need. The last one is lifestyle changes. And I know I named a lot of things, but I think it can really boil down to this. You'd rather know you're good at change or you know you're not good at change. But I think regardless of which one of these two categories you fall into, you should do a small test. So my test is, is gonna be something personal for me, right? Coffee. All of you coffee lovers know that you need your cup of coffee at a certain time and potentially two cups or more a day. A big lifestyle change for us people who drink coffee would be to not drink any coffee. So my test would be go without coffee for a whole week which honestly, that lifestyle change would adversely affect me because I wouldn't have caffeine um, and it affects a lot of other parts of my life and it's something enjoyment that I get out of every day, right? How do I deal with change after a week of just one aspect of my life? Now, I know it's not a comparison or not a good enough comparison for what a through hike may be, but you need to test yourself a little bit to see, do you even handle change on a small scale, let alone a really large scale like a through hike? Yes, I know you love going outside and that this sounds like the greatest thing ever. I just need us to get relevant today. All right, I think that's it. I think we covered it. So to deal with all of that adversity, get good gear, do the small lifestyle change test and get a support group. That is the biggest three things that you could do. Hey, and if you made it to the end, don't forget to like the like and subscribe to the subscription button. I'll just give you a little tease. Next is a gear video. We're doing two gear videos. What gear I took on the old trip and what gear changes I'm making for the new trip. It's gonna be great. Those of you who threw hike before, fellow through hikers, hey, my name's three. I only made it three days, but I'm going back. And I will see you. No, I won't actually see you. You'll see me next time. Do I look do I look like I'm chilling? I feel like I'm chilling. This person's probably watching me talking about the coffee thing as they're drinking coffee. This is to you, it's your name, Cameron, drinking your cup of coffee right now. I'm telling you, give it up for a week. Try it before you go out on that through hike. All right, I'm out. See ya.